involved in the tent meeting that's going on in Danville. And so uh, we're going to be doing TV together tonight. Glad to have you, Mark. Glad to be here. Uh, we're going to be uh, discussing uh, just some things that we're uh, involved with, some things that we're trying to get people to come out and uh, study the Bible with us under the tent. And uh, it's going on now, 7 p.m. Uh, I'm going to get my spot up here for the tent. This is the the junction of uh, Piney Forest and North Main in Danville, right across from the National Guard Armory. National Guard Armory. Or the uh, Highland Burial Park. Highland Bar yeah, Highland uh, Cemetery. So everybody knows what this uh, is, I do believe. So hope you'll come out and visit with us 7 o'clock each night. Friends, uh, the weather's been excellent. Great. I mean, you can't ask for uh, nicer weather. And, uh, so it's supposed to be that way through the next Friday. Exactly right. And then start cooling down and clouding up. So come on out, and uh, it's been, been a good time to have visitors uh, every night, I do believe, and uh, people coming out hearing uh, the, the word being taught. And as always, we have an open mic, question and answer session. If you have a question that you want to ask, bring your preacher, your pastor, bishop, rabbi, whoever it may be, and, and or come by yourself. It doesn't matter. But uh, we want to see you. We'd like to see you. Uh, and so we've been out door knocking. I don't know how many flyers have passed today. Do you know? Well, today was 700 and some, I know, yeah. just today. So just uh, estimate that for the past four or five yeah. days we've been knocking. So, and uh, the theme that is being presented under the tent is how these so-called denominational preachers have taken away the keys of knowledge. Uh, Luke 11.52, I believe right. it says, uh, the lawyers and scribes have taken away the keys of knowledge and that's exactly what's happening with these so-called denominational preachers and we're going to show that tonight and friends the area that we're in if you could go back to the map there there are I have seven or eight different brands of churches just within walking distance James of where the tent set right. up and we have been I've called all these uh, places today and invited them personal invitation to come out and you know let's have some dialogue uh, I don't know whether you want to get into that clip but um, the Jehovah Witness Kingdom Hall is located there on Terry Avenue we've talked to Albert Valentine mm -hmm. Otis Brown and I, I talked to another individual there today and he said he wouldn't be interested to come out now these are supposedly God fearing people that stand supposedly for God's word and <laughs> Just listen to the calls. Yeah. Hello, Doris Witnesses. Uh, yeah, who am I speaking with? This is Robert Roberts. Uh, Mr. Roberts, um, my name is Mark McMinnis, and I was wondering if you had heard about the gospel tent meeting that's going on in your community by the Church of Christ. Okay, it's, it's right there at the old Northside Time Battery lot, and uh, we were just wondering if um, some of the preachers there would come out and, you know, let's have, try to have some dialogue because we realize that Jesus prayed for unity in John 17. So wonder if you all would be interested in that. Well, I don't think we can make it, but thanks for the invitation. Okay, well, we're going to be there at 7 o'clock each night through next Friday. And, okay, and uh, I have talked to, uh, you know Otis Brown, don't you? Uh -huh. I've talked to Otis Brown and uh, Mr. Valentine several times, so I was hoping maybe uh, one or either both of them could come out and, you know, let's have some dialogue. What do you think about that? Well, it's up to them, but uh, at this moment, I don't think I'd be interested. You wouldn't be interested? No. Okay, even realizing that Jesus prayed for unity in John 17, you wouldn't be interested? Yes, he did. Yes, he did pray for unity. And he prayed, make it known his Father's name and kingdom. And I don't think I'd be interested at this time. So he did pray for unity. Yeah. But he's not interested. He's not interested. Okay. And friends, these are folks that you all are going to as your religious leaders yeah and, th and this and this building if I, if I zoomed out a little bit on this on this picture you could throw a rock oh yeah and hit their building i mean it's right behind these trees this, this is a group of trees right up here and uh, so here 
And their their building is right over there. I mean, and we walked a lot further than that today, <laughs> yeah. just door knocking. Yeah, and coming back, we walked across the the highways there, just door knocking. You know, over here in the what is it, High Point or North Point? North Point uh, apartment. Yeah, that's right. So, we walked from there, and that's probably about the same distance. Yeah, to to the probably so further. I'd yeah. say it's further than Kingdom Hall. So. And the next one I tried to call was Seven Day Adventist, and uh, that's on Davis Drive, but that's not on there because. Um, they don't have a preacher right now, but I did talk to one of the members there, and she was real nice, and she, you know, said that she would try to get out. Uh, but the preacher they used to have, I think it's Daniel Rojo, but he, she said that he had moved to Maryland. And okay. so they don't have a preacher, so it'd be a great opportunity for, I told her, bring the whole membership out there yeah. under the tent. I mean, here's some good gospel preaching, the truth. Yeah. And we're not afraid to stand up and defend what we're teaching, and you can ask questions. And we're not going to take your money. We right. don't pass the plate. So... You know, she was very cordial, and I appreciated that. And so I hope to see Thank them you. out there. But the next one is St. Luke United Methodist. And this one has a little good bit of Uh Yes, could I speak with uh, Miss Hannah, please? Uh, may I tell her who's calling? Mark McMinnis. All right, just a moment. Let me see if she's still here. Thank you, ma'am. Uh -huh. Hello, this is Susan. Hi, Susan. This is Mark McMinnis with the Church of Christ in Danville. Uh -huh. I was wondering if you were aware of our gospel tent meeting we're putting on over at the old Northside Tire and Battery lot. Um, I think I've, I've seen that. Okay, well, right. we have an open invitation. You know, you realize Jesus prayed for unity in John 17, that we right. all be one. And so, just wanted to, you know, give you out an uh, open invitation to come out and See if we couldn't have some dialogue. Um, I will probably not be there. Well, we're going to be there for the next two weeks at 7 o'clock each night. Uh -huh. And we are, you know, discussing Methodist doctrine, what we feel to be, you know, false, the era of, you know, so-called denominations. So uh, we'd love to give you the opportunity to come out and defend what yes. you teach. Yes, no, thank you. I don't need to defend the United Methodist doctrine. Um, well, that, I, is, that is not what we are about. Right. I don't. I don't really fault you there because it can't be defended by the Bible. But I'm. I'm saying. Um, please, I, I'm not going to enter this conversation. And um, you know, our, our doctrine. Now, friends, the Bible says Jude three, verse three. Jude has one chapter in it. We are to contend for the faith, friends. James, if somebody asked you to come out and defend what you were teaching and, and told you, you know, they believe that you were a false teacher and give you an open invitation, we'll give you the microphone to defend the doctrine that you're teaching, would you take them up on it? Oh, yeah. Even give you an offer of $1,000 to prove certain mm -hmm. things that they're teaching from the Bible. Yeah. Now, friends, this is who you're paying your money to. This, I don't know who you scroll up. Is her name under that? She's got Reverend tagged on the on the front of her name. No, uh, I don't see it. I'll find it. At least it was this afternoon when I when I looked at it. Reverend Susan Hannah. There it is. There it is. Now, friends, the word Reverend. I mean, it's bad enough some of these men walking around pinning that title on their names. Reverend in the Bible is only found one time. Psalm 111.9. The Bible says, Holy and Reverend is his name, talking about God. And they're putting themselves on the platform equal with God and won't even defend what they're teaching. We're right there within a stone's throw of where the, all of them are meeting, calling them out, come out and defend, and you all are supporting them. And they're driving around on these Bentleys, Cadillacs, building these multi-million dollar houses, these multi-million dollar buildings. And taking you all straight to hell. Your your hard earned tithes and offerings. Yeah, you know tithes and they're, offerings. They're uh, extorting you and making devouring widows houses. Kevin had a good lesson on that last night, which I guess that's what the, you all just heard uh, <clears throat> before uh, uh, we just came on. So I, I can't imagine why somebody wouldn't come out. Right. And Caleb's preaching in down in, in James. I thought of this a lot of times. You know, 
Some people may not like to come to the tent because they feel like Johnny's going to be preaching or you're going to be preaching, and they're, they, you know, these guys are a little bit intimidating. You know, they got a lot of knowledge. But then Caleb, he's preaching at the Danville building and teaching Bible classes. And friends, come on out. It's, it's, Caleb is a young guy in his early 20s. And it should not be intimidating for you, uh, someone in your 60s, 70s, 80s, or whatever, or to, to ask a question. And Caleb don't mind. He, he'll give you a Bible answer. Right. And, uh, but these folks, Susan Hannah, putting herself on a pedestal with God, and what does Paul say in 1 Corinthians 4, 6? These things, brethren, I haven't a figure transferred to myself, and to, Apollos sake, uh, and to Apollos for your sakes, that you may learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed the up. Very one fact that, the very fact that you're, you're willing to call someone reverend, a uh, word that's only used in reverence to God. Right. I mean, that is the epitome of putting someone on a pedestal. Exactly. I mean, you're, you're giving them God's name. Uh, you know, just call me James. That's uh, right. I'm just Mark. I'm, I, I sure don't want to be reverend. No, sir. You can call me a lot of things, but don't, don't, don't call me God. And especially, they're not even willing to give an answer for what they're teaching. Right. And that's something we're commanded to do, 1 Peter 3.15. Right. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. She's not even willing <clears throat> to sanctify the Lord God in her heart and give an answer to every man for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Who else did you call? Well, um... If you want to go ahead and play the rest of her, she finally hangs up. It is very scriptural, and it does not need me to defend it. We have a history that um, supports that, and I wish you well in your tent meeting, but you will not see me there. Well, I would offer you $1,000 if you could even show me the Methodist church in the Bible. Hello? Now, she hung up. Before I could get the thousand dollar offer, but yeah. that that offer standing. If now she's watching, Mark, you know, here she says, uh, she said it was scriptural. Our doctrine is scriptural. Our doctrine is yeah. scriptural, but we don't have to defend it. Well, just show it. Yeah, you know, just show it. Come out and go. Here's the scripture. That'd be a big enough, good enough defense for for me. Right. But I don't know uh, if you know Mark, but a couple weeks ago, for the past two or three weeks, or past a uh, few weeks, I was dealing with, actually with. A gentleman that that was uh, writing back, corresponding with me, and he was talking about the Methodist Church, and he's defending the Methodist Church and giving me all the information. And he said, I should have pulled up the, his reference, but he said any Methodist pastor could answer me better than he was doing. You know, so here now you're calling the Methodist pastor, right. and they're not answering. So uh, it just shows you that you have confidence in in someone that just that really can't do what you I, think they can do. Like I've heard Johnny say many times, they're smart. I don't know how in the world that these preachers, false preachers can get hoodwinked people mm-hmm. when the answers are right there in front of them and they're not willing to give an answer right. for what they're teaching from the Bible right. and yet they're just handing them money a hand over fist. and Twice on Sunday. Twice on Sunday, that's right. Oh, Main Baptist Church, Debbie may help you. Who's this? This is North Main Baptist Church. Uh, Fred Unger is there, and I know Caleb has, has discussed with Fred uh, a couple of occasions. But uh, yeah, just wanted to give him an invitation. Speak with uh, Mr. Fred Unger, please. He's not available at the moment. Would you like a voicemail? Um, are you the secretary there? Yes, ma- yes, sir. Okay, my, my name is Mark McManus. I'm with the Church of Christ in Devil, and I was just wondering if you all were aware of our gospel tent meeting we're having over at the old Northside Tire and Battery lot? No, but I'll let them know. Okay, if you would, let them know, and we'll be there through Friday, next Friday. We're going for two weeks. It's 7 o'clock each night, and uh, we are going to be talking about, you know, the different doctrines that separate us because we know that Jesus prayed for unity in John 17, that we all be one. Okay. And, and so we try to give people an opportunity to come out and let's have some dialogue, you know, and discuss our differences, so I was wondering if Mr. Unger would be interested and willing to do that. Okay. Well, uh, I'll let him know you call. I do appreciate it. All righty. Bye-bye. And you know, James, we talk to people door knocking every day. I, as I was telling you on the mm-hmm. way over here, I pulled up beside a guy today and told him about the tent, and he said, oh yeah, I, I've seen that tent. You know, everybody has seen that tent, except those that are in the 
right yeah yeah in the churches around there no we don't know anything about it no yeah. i wonder that they got to know something about they it. they got to know are and they the lying about it, yeah would you think that they were lying nah, not not, that. not religious folks. no 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 clearly wouldn't lie and i've talked to people you know talking about mr hunger um uh, knocking on doors you know you meet people that, that are in these churches talk to a lady um well, I hate to say her name, but uh, she's 91 years old. She's been going over here. I uh, said she used to go to Melville. Is it Melville right down there on Arnett? But mm -hmm. now she goes over to Mr. Unger's church, and she's 91 years old. And she said, oh, yeah, he'll talk to you. He'll be glad to answer your questions. He'd, you know, he'd be interested in something like this. But they don't, you know, you don't really know your pastors. You think these guys will come out. You think they're champions. But really, you know what, they're, they're like the, the Wizard of Oz. You know, you pull the curtain back, and they're, they're saying, well, you know, yeah. pay no attention to the guy behind the curtain. Struggling to get closed yeah. again. And that makes me think of the lady that uh, Rachel and I talked to uh, last week, uh, Miss Virginia. I don't know whether you want to get into that clip or not, but she, they don't know what their preachers are teaching. Right. They think they're teaching one thing, and they will, you know, well, let's wait on that one. Bet on it. That'll come into one of our okay. corner makers. All right, well. Let's go on with the, these calls. That's, that's North Main. <laughs> This is Grace Design, Grace Design Methodist Church. Again, uh, I'm Grace Design Methodist Church in Danville, Virginia. Please leave a message and we will return your call. Just left the message on there. Thank you and have a blessed day. Well, let's skip on it. Uh, Hi, this is Grace Design Methodist Church. Uh, I'm Mark McManus with the Church of Christ in let's Danville. Keep that one. Uh, yes, this is Mark McManus with the Church of Christ in let's Danville. But we would hope that the preachers in this area would be willing to come out and discuss. Hi, you have reached Christ the King Lutheran Church. We can't come to the phone right now, but if you'd be kind enough to leave your name, phone number, and a brief message, we will return the call when we have a chance. That's the same thing. I just left a message, and uh, the preacher who, there who is, is the preacher there is Brian Martin. Who, who uh, that? that was the Christ the King Lutheran Church on Franklin Turnpike. Okay. Now, see, we have Lutheran, we have uh, Jehovah Witness, so called Seventh Day Adventist, Methodist. Mormon, Latter-day Saints, Baptist, six different brands of churches, and I did talk, uh, well, I didn't talk to him, actually called the Nordan Church of Christ and left a message for Mr. Johnny Melton. He and I have discussed previously, and there's some tenets that uh, we disagree on that I would hope that right. he would come out and discuss also. So we're not prejudiced. We're calling out churches of Christ in this area, too. You know, they're located on Nordan Drive, or, or Orchard Drive, Nordan Church of Christ. James, I've lived in Danville all my life. And until I became a member of the Church of Christ, 2006, I never heard of the Church of Christ, you know, in, in Danville. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And Nordan has been there, I don't know how long. They're not getting out and doing anything. Right. And so I don't look to see Johnny Melton, but he's going to have to answer for that. Right. So, well, you know, we were not the doors. Uh, one time, this has been several years ago, and uh, we put a flyer on the door. I think the lady lives right across the street, maybe from uh, Nordan, uh, the church there in Nordan. Church building, yeah. yeah. I and remember that. She tore the flyer up. She tore the flyer up, and she immediately said, you know, she immediately assumed it was us instead of assuming it was the people right across right. the street. And I'm thinking, you know. That's if, how invisible yeah, they are. Yeah. If, the, if, the, if you get a flyer on your door that says the Church of Christ, and it was very generic. It was a very rushed a flyer. I remember we made it. Just said Church of Christ about you to a, to a tent meeting, and she immediately assumed it was not the people right across the street from her, because you know they they would never knock on their door. I guess it's got to be the, it's got to be them people that's stirring up the community, yeah, yeah. yeah. preaching the truth. Uh, no collections are taken up. We simply want to have dialogue because we have invitation and hope to see you there. Thank you. Bye. Church. Now this, we can't take your call right now. This is Hope Church. Hope used, Church. used to be Blessed Hope Church. Oh, Brian, Brian, Brian Edwards. Edwards. Okay. Yeah, and I had to leave a message on, okay. on his answering machine. Please, you leave your name and number. We'll be glad to get back with you. Now, we talked about lying, but they don't know that's going on. They said they'll get back with you. So all these that you left messages on, they'll say we'll get back with you. I'm expecting eight calls. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> If you would like to join us for worship on Sunday, our service times are 9 a.m. and 1045 a.m. Thank you and God bless. Uh, John, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up. 
So we're hoping you'll take us up on this opportunity, uh, realizing that Jesus... ...message at the beat. Mm -hmm. We meet on this Sundays... Johnny Sunday. Melton. Okay. Classes at ten o'clock. Yeah, we won't have time for them. All right, so, so all these people you left left message for them, invited them out, and you know, friends, this is what we're saying. All the preachers, they got all the PhDs, that the letters after their names, they should be the ones that are able to give an answer for the reason of their hope. They're the ones that ought to be able to to give a defense of the gospel, defend what they're preaching. They've got all the the education. They're the ones that you put your confidence in. So why is it that they're not returning the calls or coming out? Right. They're the ones that you're tithing to. You're paying for their expensive automobiles and their homes and everything. And then they're not willing to give an answer. And they're giving you a false hope that they won't even defend. And friends, if they won't defend you now, they're not going to stand with you on the judgment. No one's right. going to stand with you on the judgment. you be there all by yourself. And friends, these are... Church buildings are places of worship within, a, like James said, within a stone's throw of the tent. They could walk. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that's like a walk to the mailbox to come out to the tent. And they're not willing to make the effort. And Jesus said, go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And they don't want to do that. They want to stay within their little four walls and just continue to feed false doctrine to you all. And you all let them get by with it. Right. I don't so at least on, on Wednesdays and Sundays or when they have their midweek services or whatever, you know, I'm here, you could say, all right, we're just going to go right over here to the tent, and you know, just all load up. You're, you come this far right. anyway, what, go another 100 yards or whatever. Right. So, well, Mark, let me, uh, let me ask you this. We've, we've talked about we're inviting all these people out. Uh, we talked about the, the fact that they're, they don't seem to be willing to, to come out and give an answer. And you mentioned that you've been in uh, Living Devil all your life and never, heard, never learned the gospel really until 2006. That's right. Uh, what are some things I know you were talking about this earlier today what are some things that you were told were right but you realize just aren't true well I was just thinking about that last night as I told you and I was just thinking about what are things that I was taught that the Bible says or Bible teaches that are not actually taught from the Bible but I was taught it by man and I came up with 36 topics just off the top of my head, probably within yeah. 10, 15 minutes. Right. And I jot them down. If you want to go through some of them, we can. Well, all right. But I'm sure there are others out there that, that these are going to fit right in. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And you're going to see them and you're going to say, oh, yeah, that's what the Bible teaches because my pastor said it. That's what the Bible mm -hmm. teaches because my preacher said it. But they're false to the core. And there's some things, Mark, that, you know, when you learn something's not true in some areas, it doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt you. You know, I mean, I remember... Uh, we were sitting around talking, and, and we were talking about ostrich. Someone said ostrich puts their head in the sand. Right. An ostrich doesn't really put their head in the sand. I mean, you know, they, they just don't do it. There may be the, the illusion they dig holes in the ground where they nest in, and it looks like maybe if they're standing up, it just looks that. But when you learn that an ostrich really doesn't put his head in the sand, that doesn't just throw your world upside yeah. down. I mean, it's a, okay, I've, I've learned something new here, you know. It's nothing that's going to affect you. Yeah, yeah, but this, we're talking about information from the Bible that you've been told this is true, and now all of a sudden you're going to learn it's not true. This affects your soul. Jesus right. said, you know, what's a man, what should a man uh, give in exchange for his soul? You know, this is uh, 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 what a man profit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul. So the, the idea that you might be have been taught something from your youth up, from you know just being a toddler, and here it is not really in the Bible, that ought to scare you. I mean, that ought to give you some grave concern. So right. we might say this is what we're going to be talking about is not a word from the Lord or what the Bible does not say, because that's really what we're talking about. Denominational doctrines oftentimes have the semblance. They look like the truth, you know, maybe sound like the truth, but in reality, they're not. I was talking to a young man uh, while we were door knocking, and he said something. I wish I could remember what it was. It was something about, uh, well, the Bible says, and it was kind of right, but it, was, it wasn't it was exactly right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a little bit off. It wasn't cleanliness is next to godliness, but it's something like that, something you've heard people say. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I looked at your list, and I, I pulled some of these off, and I thought, well, let's just go through some of these. What about this one? Denominations are okay, you know, acceptable to God. And that, you know, that's what the religious world says, mm -hmm. because if they say they're not, 
they then they have to explain condemning themselves. Yeah, why they, why are they in existence here? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was when you were growing up or when you were hearing the Bible? What was the? I mean, what was your impression? What were your thought about? Well, that? I really didn't press it because my sister, she was going to a Methodist church. One of them. My other sister was involved with the Pentecostal church. My parents, when they would go, they were involved with the Baptist church. So there's three different faiths. My brother's an atheist today because, you know, and I don't blame him. Yeah. I mean, to that degree, because he simply hadn't gone to the Word. I wish yeah. I, could, I could talk with him. He's so, he's so mad with God, he won't, don't even want to look at the book. But that's what it produces. Yeah. And uh, denominations... You know, when, when we said John 17, Jesus prayed, John 17, verse 20 and 21, Jesus prayed for unity, that we all be one. And then Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, 10, I, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you. Now, when we see that, there's no way that these denominations are pleasing to God right. when they're all teaching different doctrines. And, and this is what we say, too, you know, in John... Sorry about that. In John uh, 17, when Jesus made uh, was 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 praying this, you know, he said, uh, verse 20, he said, through their word that they which believe on me through their word that they may all be one. So it's unity is going to come through the word. That's right. It's not going to come through man's words. It's going to come through these creed books or catechism. It's going to come through the word. And the only way that you're going to have unity through the Word is if we all get together and open the book up and say, all right, you know, let's put everything aside except trying to find out what is the truth. And there's no doubt about it in Danville, the city of churches, and anywhere else for that matter. When you've got people all claiming, we follow the Bible, we follow the Bible, we follow the Bible, but we're all different. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no way we're going to have unity with that, with that mindset. But it goes back to the theme of the tent meeting. The preachers have taken away the key of knowledge, just like Micah was preaching on tonight. Uh, they're dumbing down the book and claiming that they're getting direct revelation today. Right. The preachers are being talked to directly by God today. So they're dumbing down God's Word, the way that God actually talks to people today. And people claim, well, that's just a Bible. You can't really understand it. Nobody can understand it alike. And so they don't even try. Yeah. And Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, I believe it's about verse uh, 3 through 4, that when you read, you may understand. Now, either that's true or God's a liar because Paul was inspired right. by the Holy Spirit. Um, I know. Yeah, uh, uh, Ephesians 3, 4. Right. About when you read, you may understand my knowledge. In the mystery of Christ, uh, a gentleman came by the tent. Uh, I guess the first day we we're uh, Monday, I guess maybe, and you know, curious, and uh, began telling me, you know, where he went to church and so forth, and and it never fails. People say, well, I believe the Bible, but then they start telling you a story. Well, friends, they just, you know, when you say you believe the Bible, but then you're telling me this is how you know something that's not in the Bible, then it tells me you really don't believe the Bible. The Bible just says it must be a, a placeholder or something. You know, you just got a, a paperweight or something sitting mm -hmm. on your desk or coffee table because it's not being used to educate or, or develop your mind as far as what, what the will of God is. So um, everything you know about God, about the Holy Spirit, about Jesus, is going to come from this book. That's right. So why would you not go to the book for more information about these topics? And, and uh, so... Uh, but yeah, denominations accepted with God, and I know John 15 is that. That's where they go a lot of times to right to claim that denominations are the branches. Right. But if we read the context, the context here is not referring to so-called denominations as the branches. Right. You want me to read it? Or? I don't care. Uh, he says, "I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not now." That just dawned on me right there, James. Every branch in me, how does the Bible teach that we get into Christ? Right. You're baptized. Into Christ. Galatians 3.27. So what about these churches that don't believe you have to be baptized? Yeah. And you can't be in Christ. You can't be a branch in Christ. That's you right. You can't be a branch connected to Christ because the branch is in Christ. 
Unless but, you've been baptized into Christ, which you don't believe. That's right. But they're going to claim that the branches are denominational churches. But if you read on, we can prove that the branches are not talking about churches. Right. That's Every right. branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I was trying to get out of the way. I'm moving the wrong way. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me. He. He's talking about individual Christians. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man, not a denominational church, right. if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth of the branch. So this is talking about Christians, folks. And the Bible speaks of only one faith. Ephesians 4, 5, Paul says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It amazes me, James, is door knocking, talking, you know. And you have to ask, you know, what faith are you? And you point out what well, the Bible speaks of only one faith. And, and I, I'll agree with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's one faith. Yeah. And so they'll say, well, I'm, in, I'm of the Baptist faith. Yeah. And I said, well, now, the Bible speaks of only one faith. And I read about Christian. The disciples of Christ were called Christians, Acts 11, 26. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 16, Peter says, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Well, I'm a Christian. Then they'll turn around. Mm-hmm. They want to be a Christian. Right. But Pe- they... But they're not. Yeah, people want to know that. I mean, they want to believe that they've obeyed the truth. And when you show them the truth, they want to say, yes, that's what I've done, or that's what I believe. Right. You know, you say there's one faith. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's one faith. But you just admitted that you are in a faith, a Baptist faith, a Methodist faith, whatever. And that faith's not in the Bible. That cannot be part of the one faith. We just pointed out, James. So, I don't know what I did with my list, but all of these eight churches there's seven different faiths right here and i called every one of them and none of them's willing to come out and defend right. the faith right. that they believe if they believe if they were really part of the faith they would defend these certainly so so you see what i'm saying friends but how many people believe that well denominations are okay and, and when you talk to people mark you know they'll tell you well just go to church of your choice you've got guys like like uh, billy graham you know, say, well, just go find a Bible-believing church. Well, what is that? That's a very generic term, a just, Bible-believing church. Just because they hold up a Bible, they'll say, well, my preacher preaches right from the Bible. Mm-hmm. Well, show me. And I ask, you know, the preacher, I believe it's, uh, I can't think it was Mr. Flora or one of them, to show me the Baptist church in the Bible. Well, there's no denominations in there. Okay. That's just a name, he says. Okay, Acts 4.12 says, There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that's the name of Christ. Yet all these so-called Christians, they don't want to wear the name of Christ. They want to wear the name of Baptist, Lutheran, Methodist, whatever. Hey, how you doing? All right. This, this is a Baptist preacher. This is a Baptist preacher. It's Martin. This is Rachel. And how are you? We're with the Church of Christ, and we're having a... Uh, Gospel tent meeting up here at the old North Side Tire and Battery lot, right, right across the road. Did you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, seven o'clock each He's night. We him. never ask for any money. We don't want your money. We're not taking up a collection. We're simply preaching the gospel, and we want you to come out and investigate what we teach. We'll bring your preacher because that's really who we're trying to get out. Because we realize that Jesus in John 17 prayed for unity, that we are all the believers be one in Him, and that we're supposed to be teaching the same doctrine. But that's not what we're seeing. I mean, you have Baptist doctrine, Lutheran doctrine, Methodist doctrine, Hope Witness, Mormon. Keep, keep the bugs out. <laughs> yeah, okay. And so the Bible speaks of only one faith. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5, Paul says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm a retired minister. Are you? I know, I know what you're talking about. Okay, so what church were you in? Uh, North Main Baptist. North Main Baptist, okay. Uh, now that's where Mr. Unger is. Mr. Unger is there now, yeah. They're teaching the same doctrine. I'm Fred Unger's up there now. Right. Uh, what was your name? Flora Kyle Flora. Flora Kyle. I, I was associate pastor. After I retired from Mount Tabor out in the country, okay. uh, I became associate pastor here for about five and a half years. Right. 
Well, you know, Mr. Floyd, I used to be in the Baptist church when I was growing up. And that's where my parents were and all. And so usually, you know, that's tradition. But then when I got to studying the Bible, and the, the doctrine that I, one of the doctrines that I was taught in the Baptist church is that you're born in sin. Have you ever heard that? That you inherited sin from Adam? And that's, that's true. I, I believe that. Well, no, that's false. Not. All right, let's stop right there. That, here's, I mean, here's a preacher. Yeah. Been preaching. I, I mean, he was in his 80s, I'm, I'm assuming. But he's done retired from two churches. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, the members have done put him, give him two retirement checks, <laughs> and he's preaching false doctrine. And right. he's not coming out of it. Yeah. I mean, he's, he is stiff-necked as they come. I, you're not going to change my mind, no matter what the Bible well, says. Well, let's, let's, let's move on to another point here, since he talked about born in sin. Yeah. I know that's, that's another one of the things that you talked about as far as uh, yeah. not... Not realizing how wrong it was, uh, and here's a man that says, "Well, that, you know, retired preacher. Yeah, that's that, that's right. Born in sin's right. Yeah, but it, but it's not right. I mean, it's just not. And nowhere in the Bible do you find that as far as what they say. Now, you can find some uh, things in the Bible, like Psalm 51, verse five, that might seem to teach that. But Mark, this is one of the things that we were discussing under the tent as far as the uh, the key of knowledge." You know, if you're not right at dividing the word of truth, you'll you'll come up with a lot of crazy doctrines yep. that will conflict or contradict with the Bible in another place. And James, I don't know the time's getting away from us, but you want to put the phone numbers up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd love to have uh, phone calls. This is a back and forth. If if you have a Bible question or... There might be something, there might be something that... You believe in the Bible. You want to see if it's in the Bible or not. Call up and say, you know, what about this? And we'll give you a Bible answer. Today, I knocked on a man's door, handed him a flyer, and he said, I want to ask you a question. I said, okay. You know, he said, what's the Holy Spirit? So we started talking about the Holy Spirit. And I right. explained to him what the, the work of the Holy Spirit was. Friends, you know, the only way you're going to learn is if you ask questions. That's exactly and, right. And so we want you to ask questions and uh, uh, open the dialogue up, and we'll see what... Uh, you know what the Bible has to say about the questions you're having, but and James, the, the doctrine of born in sin that we were addressing, that particular doctrine just about made me just throw religion out the window, not to have anything to because I always questioned that to a certain extent. I, I had trouble with it right. because here I am, born in sin. You know the Bible says I know that God creates the spirit within us. God created a sinful spirit within me, and now He wants me to repent. I said that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. That would make God a hypocrite. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are having difficulty with that. Even preachers, they have difficulty with that. Well, I don't know. I don't know how it works. But you're born in mm -hmm. sin just because they've heard it right. all their life. And the scripture right here, Psalm fifty-one five. This does not say that you're born in sin. Right. David says, "Behold, I was shapen in iniquity." And in sin did my mother conceive me. Who was in the sin? His mother. Right. Not David. Right. His his great 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 great, great grand, ten yeah, generations grand, before. Yeah. Yeah. It's talking about uh, Tamar, Tamar uh, when uh, Jacob went into Tamar. But friends, David did sin, and the Bible does say all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But not all the, not all are born in sin. Not all born in sin. Well, we got a phone yeah. call. Good evening, caller. You on a word from the Lord. Hi, Mark. Hi, James. Uh, you know, the way society is nowadays, everybody's uh, fighting and protesting and and all apart and uh, discriminating and stuff. What better way to unite than for everybody to read off the same page and same book instead of all these different denominations? That's right. right. Yeah, that, that's a good point. You know, you 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 probably not ever, you're not going to get have peace between the Muslims and the Jews, you know, or the 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 white supremacists and the black supremacists. But you ought to be able to have peace between everybody in so-called Christianity. I mean, right. you know. Appreciate your program. All right. Thanks for your call. Uh, you you know, Mark, that, and, and so that's you know that's a good point about you know this would be an easy solution. You know, you're not gonna have world peace over there between the the uh, the Arabs and the and the Jews, but this would be easy. Sure, I mean, if you're seriously considering this is God's word, 
and I know God wants me to be saved, I'm going to read it and study it. And if, it does, if it's not in there, I'm not going to believe it. Like right. the Baptist church right. or born in sin or wow. those 36 others. That, but, you know, born in sin, it goes back to the, the doctrine, that, I mean, the lesson that Caleb preached last night. Yeah. It made me think of my own life. You know, I was taught that. And if I'd have threw religion out the window, Jesus, our God created us innocent. Matthew right. 18, Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. We're innocent. God recognizes, but our sins separate us, like Caleb said last night, separate us from God. And then at some point, Jesus in Matthew 7, 21 says, uh, at some point, if you're separated far enough, he'll say, I never knew you. Right. God knows us. He formed us in our mother's womb, is what the Bible says. Now we heard Mr. Flora say that born in sin was right. I want, you li- I want li- uh, them, everybody to listen to uh, Tim Whitehart talk about his own child. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Born in sin. Wow. Listen to what he has to say. They preach, I just don't get it. I, I tell you, I'm not a sinner. I tell you, you are. And if you just said that, you just lied, so you sin. There you go. My baby is three months old. I love her to death. She is so beautiful. She already knows who she's got to wrap around her finger to make it in life. Me, Daddy. And so I look down into her little Creover. I hold her in my arms and look down at her. She's already giving me the little eyes and a little smile. By the way, I line up. She does it to nobody else but me. Those eyes are just... She's not what you ask her mom. She's giving me those eyes. And man, she's smiling. And she's cooing. And it's like she already knows. I know I'll wrap her on my finger and you know what I'm saying about that little three-month-old baby? My Alexandria, my a- we call her Allie for short, but you know what I've said about her? I've looked in her eyes and I've said, you've got to be the most perfect angel that ever has been created. And you know, when I say that, I mean that, but you know there's, there's a lot of untruth in what I just said. I mean, I love her, there's nothing wrong with that, and I'm not going to sit there and call her bad names or anything because she's my precious angel. But she's not perfect by any means. The Bible says, even though she appears that way, that we are all are born to see it. Are you listening? In sin, David said in Psalm 51, did my mother conceive me? He said, I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is ever before me. In verse now, here, here's, 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 let's can't get over this, Mark. Here he's talking about his child. He said, I, I, I'm not going to sit there and call her bad names. But you're a filthy, rotten, stinking sinner. Well, what else are you calling her when you're saying you're born to sin? I can't believe it. I mean, mean, it just makes me sick. Uh, James, what woman would want her husband to look at their child that way? I know. I remember we was door knocking. As as I said, uh, Rachel and I were door knocking. I think it was last week. We was talking to Miss Virginia, and Miss Virginia is just the sweetest lady you ever want to meet. But she's in a false church. She's in a Baptist church. And she looked at Rachel and she said, you're just adorable. She said, have you got a boyfriend? And I said, Rachel's going to be looking to marry a Christian. She's not going to be looking. Do you, would you want your daughter to marry somebody that's going to look at your children and say, yeah. they're sinners. Sinners. Yeah. sinners. The Bible says train up a child in the way it should go. When he's old, they will not depart from it. Proverbs 22.6. So children have to be taught. They, sin is a transgression of the law. 1 John 3, 4. It's not something we inherit. Right. Children do not inherit sin. We didn't inherit sin from Adam. That's false doctrine, folks. C- Caleb made a good point with this, uh, on this very point last night, uh, Mark. Psalm 127, verse 3 says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, right. uh, and the fruit of the womb is, is his reward. And he made the, uh, the, the comparison, and if you saw the previous show, I'm sure you heard it. But it's like, when you God, this is a gift. Children are a gift from God, and if you get a gift from God, and yet now they're born in sin, He says it's like getting a gift that's broken. Right. You know. Well, I appreciate the thought, but the gift's broken. And I thought that's a that's a very good illustration about what it is like to say a child is born in sin. Exactly. It comes broken. You know. And, and I just and what a thought process it gives them later on in life. Right. Well, you were you were born corrupted. Yeah. yeah. You're on the word from the Lord. Hi. Uh, hello, 
to both of you gentlemen. Good evening. James, it, when the Israelites, the people of Israel, like Israel, were slaves to the Egyptians, were the Egyptians actually Africans? Uh, uh, they were Egyptians. What was, the, what was the difference in the characteristics of physical appearance? I don't know. I, I wasn't alive back then. Obviously, they were Africans because Egypt is in Africa, but uh, it's on the continent of Africa. But I don't know what I don't know what they look like. I mean, I don't know what. I mean, you see how society changes over a period of time, you know. And man, regardless of, of yeah, what they were, it really matter. The Bible says God is no respecter of persons. So that really doesn't matter. That's a moot point. The, and the children of Israel, what do they look like? So I don't know. Are you? I don't know. I'm just saying it doesn't really matter what what they looked like, you know, of the outward appearance. One. Well, what, 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 if it doesn't matter what people look like, why are there different people that look differently in the world? Well, God made the races, but it, it doesn't mean that one is better than the other. It doesn't matter if I mean if if one has enslaved one race has enslaved another race. That's bad. I mean, the Bible talks about, you know, men stealing and things like that. But, I mean, black races have enslaved black people and white races have enslaved white people and Indians have enslaved black people and Indians have enslaved white people and white people have enslaved Indians and whatever. I mean, it's, that's, I don't know. I don't know why, what, what's the, what's your point, I guess? I, I, I was just wondering, um, it was, it was something you all were talking about early, and, and now it escapes me. But uh, well, ma'am, have you been taught that God does not um, authorize mixed marriages? No, no. Okay, I, well, I, I, I know that's one of the tenets uh, that I had taught, in there. Well, I, I think I was taught that uh, you you devote yourself to your family, then you try to help your community and try to help other people Okay. and, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay. All right. Well, I, I hope we helped answer your question. Thanks, thanks for your call, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Martin, let's move on. Let's get, uh, let's, let's get one more. We're, we're uh, this is a fast, fast hour. Uh, well, I hope we have convince the people. And, and friends, if your preacher won't come out and defend the doctrine that he's teaching, born in sin, then don't that make you think it's false doctrine? If, you, if your doctor wouldn't, wouldn't defend his prognosis or diagnosis of, of your uh, treatment or your disease, whatever, I mean, wouldn't that keep exactly. you concerned? It's just, a, just think, if your doctor told you you had cancer and you said you wanted to get a, a second opinion and you said to your first doctor, I want you to go with me and let's go to this other doctor and get a second opinion. And he says, no, I'm not going out there to get a second opinion. I wouldn't trust that doctor. Yeah, right. and, and here's the preachers. They're teaching this false doctrine. And they're not. we give them a personal call, a personal invitation. Come out. Let's get a second opinion. Right. Mark, I want to jump ahead. Uh, we got miracles for today up here. But I want to jump ahead to, to one. Uh, and that's this one. Infant baptism. False doctrine. What, what, what were you taught about this? Well, I've always heard it as a christening. They christened the babies. Right. Uh, now, the Baptist church that I was in younger, they didn't really teach infant baptism. But I had heard it, and the Methodist church teaches it. But, you know, the scriptures teach, Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So, Infants don't know what yeah. to believe. But what about this, though, Mark? In, in Matthew 19, verse 14, Jesus said, uh, Suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. I mean, what if someone said that? I mean, what, isn't Jesus saying that these children need to be baptized? You believe baptisms put you in the he and into the kingdom, so why would not we just baptize children and, let them and put them into the kingdom? Well, there again, um, he compares... The little children, that goes back to, you know, born in sin. He compares the little children to the kingdom of heaven. So would that 
not say that children are innocent. They're right. not. They're not right. sinful. Right. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm just making their argument for you. But when Jesus says this, "Suffer the little children to come unto me," I mean, he's he's not saying baptize them. He's saying this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. At become as a child. Right. So uh, the innocence. The uh, and Paul said, "In malice be as children." You know, children don't have malice, which again goes to they're not born wicked. You know, they don't have uh, evil in their in their minds or in their hearts. They have to be taught that. But the idea that that you baptize infants, and you mentioned you know a, a child can't believe or infant can't believe, especially and uh, repent. That's what right. do you have to repent of? Confess Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, these are things that are essential to uh, uh, obeying the gospel, which a child obviously cannot do. An infant certainly cannot do it, and and I would argue even a child can't do it. I mean, they don't have the grasp of the concept or the understanding of, of uh, what it means to become like a child. But there again, James, if you think about infant baptism, okay, what if the infant died before he was baptized? I mean, they're claiming the infant needs baptism because he's sinful. He was born in sin. Now, Jesus said in John 8, uh, I believe it's about 21, that if you die in your sin, where I am there, you cannot come. Yeah. So, if an infant were to die in their sin, they're born in sin, if they died like a week after birth, they would have to say they were lost for eternity. Well, um, and then they would say, well, Mark, you believe baptism is for the remission of sin, so we need to baptize these infants then. They're not born in sin. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's the circular uh, reasoning or the, you know, that uh, denominations get into. They say, okay, well, we know that this is something, so, or they say that, if we believe this, then we have to make up another doctrine to get around it. How do you get around children who die in infancy, right. you know, not going to hell. Well, God's grace covers them. Well, why can't God's grace cover them? Isn't that amazing? You know? They get one false doctrine, and they go to the Bible to help support that false doctrine instead of going to the Bible to realize what, what, what yeah. it says. And if, they, if they really went to the Bible, they would find the answer. That They'd find the false doctrine not really in the Bible. That's right. So... Uh, the, the, the problem that you have with false doctrine is always it's like that tangled web, you know, just oh, that what chewing gum that you know just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So, right. but I'd say, Mark, we have a lot of people that believe infant baptism, uh, even in the Lord's church, you know, baptizing kids. Mm. I mean, the same arguments that they would make against infant baptism are the same arguments that people make for infant baptism some of our brethren make to baptize their children. Right. And, and that goes back, I believe, to, like Mr. Flora said, he grew up in the Baptist church. A lot of persons that are growing up in the you know, Lord's church, they think, well, I'm baptized at six, seven, eight years old, so right. I'm good. And they really don't you know, yeah. know what they were baptized for. They haven't for. committed to anything mm-hmm. other than exactly what right. want me to. Just going by tradition. This is what I always try to get people to realize. In the New Testament, when you find people obeying the gospel, it's always men and women. Exactly. I mean, in, in Acts, here we are, Acts chapter 8, verse 12, they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptized both men and women, never children, never children. And if you come down to the next chapter where you find... Uh, Paul breathing out threatenings, you know, and, and uh, slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. Notice what he did. He went and got uh, letters from the high priest to Damascus. If he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, didn't say anything about children. Right. Why? Because he knew that the children were not in the way. The children were not the disciples or the followers of the Christ. They weren't Christian. And so when you look at who Paul persecuted, you look at who. Uh, we're obeying the gospel. It's always men and women, men and women, men and women. It's not, not children. Exactly right. And so uh, it just shows really how easy the Bible is to answer some things if we just open it up and see what the Bible what, has to say about it. What infant knows anything about the kingdom? I mean, he was preaching what? Yep. Things concerning the, the kingdom, kingdom of God. You're going to go to a, a, a two-week-old infant. Do you know about the kingdom of God? Yeah. Do you believe it? You know, oh, he yeah. said, yeah, he's yeah. speaking tongues. He, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, 
Uh, it's so simple, friends. Right. And well, let's get to one more here. Baptism not essential. Um, we got to rush through this. Well, that's where but, Mr. Flora was. All right. Let's. Uh, I don't know if we. You remember no, he said the Baptist Church was not yeah, essential. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. Okay. And that is a profound statement, friends. You're all out here in a church that's not even essential. Jesus prayed for unity that we all be one, and the church that you're in is not even essential. According to your preachers, they're saying that the Baptist Church is not essential. Well, the Church of Christ is essential. Yeah, Mr. Flagler? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I was uh, out door knocking. I'm with the Church of Christ. That's the audio. You can, you can play that. And um, I was out door knocking yesterday. And I said, this is the audio. I'll, I'll go ahead and set this up. The members of River that was Miss Virginia. We, we had spoken to Miss Virginia uh, while we was door knocking, and she said that her preacher at, at uh, Fairmount Baptist Church, John Fletcher, he teaches that baptism is essential. You have to be baptized to go to heaven. I said, I've never met a Baptist preacher that say that. And so I called Mr. Fletcher, and this is a phone call. Uh, where was it in the call, do you know? Oh, it's pretty, and, uh, pretty near the end. It's, it's not a very long call. What time is it? Oh, yes. Not baptism is essential for salvation. Not baptism okay. essential for salvation. And this is a... Baptism for the remission of sin. Not baptism is essential for salvation. Okay. And this is as far as I care to go because I believe I'm being recorded. So thank you. Have a great day. Well, all right. I said, well, what? what's wrong with that? Why would you that record be us? Problem. Why would that be a problem? Jesus said go out and preach the gospel to all the world and these false preachers are afraid they're being recorded. They don't want God's word. They don't want their word. They're not now, preaching why God's would you word. Not wanna, why would you not want to lie on the record? You know? <laughs> just, right? Isn't that what people do? If they're lying, they don't want to be on the record. And that's, that's what we're trying to say, friends. Yeah. They're hiding the truth from you. And Taking so, away the keys of knowledge. That's right. So... And I have Ephesians 2 8 up here. This is because that's what people say. You know, baptism is not essential because Paul said, By grace are you saved through faith, and that is not of yourself as a gift of God. So Johnny that, answered that you know, when he addressed the Phelps. And you know, I think he played that on the program the other night. And it was under the tent uh, the other night when Johnny was preaching. Uh, just because it says it's a gift doesn't mean you don't have to do something to activate that gift. Just right. like, you know, giving somebody a cell phone. Well, a cell phone mm -hmm. don't work. You've got to buy minutes, you've got to put a battery in it. It's right. still a gift. Right. You do something for it. Friends, I mean, there's so many, so many questions that, uh, that can be answered if you just go to the Bible. Things that you might have not realized or not in the Bible. I don't know how many times I've talked to people and said, you know, have you ever stopped to think that we're offering $1,000 if you can find the Baptist church in the Bible? You know, and, and uh, I talked to a man the other day and said that, and he goes, you know, I never, never thought about it that way. Never thought about studying it that way. Well, $1,000... Man, I'd be reading the Bible. Right. You know? Crack I would. Open. <laughs> Give me a concordance and I'd find, you know, I'd be Googling Baptist church in the Bible or whatever. James, just like I told Miss Susan Hannah tonight. But, well, I don't know whether she heard me because she hung up, but I offered $1,000 if she could find the Methodist church in the Bible. And the doctrine of born in sin, all these doctrines that are not in the Bible, we're offering $1,000. I wouldn't put one red penny in that right. collection plate if I was a member that... Uh, St. Luke's Methodist Church, I wouldn't put one red penny. Look, you had an offer for a thousand dollars and you wouldn't go and take it. Yeah. I'm not giving you one yeah. red dime. You find it. You find it and get a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's right. Of course then she'd want you to tithe as part of that probably. Yeah, another so, false doctrine. Yeah. <laughs> uh well Mark, we're we're coming up on uh, just a couple minutes left, so what I want to do is I'm gonna get back to the uh where we were here yeah. at, at the very beginning. I want to uh Remind everybody of the tent. It's on the corner of uh, the intersection of uh, Piney Forest and North Main, 7 p.m. every night. We never take up a collection. We don't want you to feel obligated, feel like you got to bring your, your wallet and whatever. Never pass a chicken bucket, never pass the hat, never put a bucket out there for you to uh, throw any money in. Just come. There's, you know, you want a cool glass, a bottle of water, free water, you know, just. Mm -hmm. Free literature, out and, all kinds of yeah. literature there. Sign up, get a whole set of the DVDs. And, right. and just anything is free. But uh, I also want to remind you of uh, 
uh, Word from the Lord on the radio. You can, uh, this is Sundays at 5 p.m. You can go to rcr24.com. Just type in rcr24.com. Click the live, listen live link, and you can listen streaming live, or you can tune in 1490 uh, WLOE, 1420 WMYN5. Uh, it's a live call-in program. You can just, you know, same format, call in with your Bible questions. It just shows you the Church of Christ are the, are the people that are so concerned about you that they're opening up the phone lines or they're buying the airtime, radio, TV, to uh, get the word to you. And so that's, that's because we love you enough uh, to do that. So the tent is just another opportunity, another venue for doing that very thing. So Be there through next Friday, the 29th, 7 o'clock each night. So please come out and study with us. We want to be your friends. That's right. All right, we're out of time, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Have a good night.